Hello and welcome to the workshop at the Conquer Free Public Library. My name is Christy and I'm here today to show you how to safely operate the workshop's E3 Pro 3D printers. Is this the right 3D printer for you? The workshop offers two models of 3D printers, the Robo E4 and the Robo E3 Pro. We think that the setup process on our E4s is a little bit simpler, and they also have a significantly faster maximum print speed than the E3 Pro machine. This makes them a great fit for first-time 3D printer users. But if you're hoping to work on a larger project, you may want to use one of our E3 Pro machines, which have a much larger maximum print volume. You can watch our E4 tutorial video at cfpl.info slash 3D print. Let's start with the safety notes. The metal nozzles on 3D printers called extruders can reach temperatures of up to nearly 600 degrees Fahrenheit. To prevent injury, keep hands away from the nozzle at all times when the machine is on. Modern 3D printers are equipped with emergency shutoffs that trigger when overheating is detected, but in the very unlikely event of a fire, immediately evacuate the building and call 911. A fire extinguisher and a first aid kit are also available at the workshop's front desk in case of an emergency. Now let's take a look at materials. 3D printers use technology called CNC, Computer Numerical Control, to translate digital 3D designs into physical objects. The nozzle at the top of the machine, called an extruder, heats and lays down repeated layers of plastic called filament that eventually build up into the walls of your object, basically like a super smart glue gun. Due to the fumes released by some other plastics, the workshop only allows the use of 1.75 millimeter PLA, which can be purchased online or at some specialty electronic stores. To keep the 3D printer working its best, we don't allow the use of PLA with wood or metal fill. If this is your first time 3D printing, you're more than welcome to print something small with the workshop's filament for free. But if you're planning a larger project or printing on the regular, we ask all makers to help us keep the workshop free and accessible to everyone by either bringing your own materials from home or donating to help cover the cost of materials, about 75 cents per hour of printing. Okay, let's get making. Plug the power adapter into the port at the back of the machine, then into the wall, and turn the 3D printer on using the switch at the back of the machine. While the touchscreen loads, take a look at the reel of filament feeding into the machine. If the filament in the machine is the filament you'd like to use to print, you can skip this next step. But if you'd like a different color or the reel looks like it's too low on plastic for the size of your print, you'll need to unload the current reel and load a new one into the machine. To do this, tap tools, then filament on the touchscreen. Next, choose unload. The printer will take a few minutes to heat the extruder up, then let you know when it's safe to remove the current filament. Find the small black lever on the left side of the print head and press down on it. Then gently tug the filament and the plastic tubing free of the top of the print head. Now let go of the lever. Tap the done button on the touchscreen to let the printer know you're finished removing the filament. Then rewind the filament onto its reel, being careful not to tangle it for the next maker. Remove the old reel and replace it with the filament you'd like to use. Be sure to check the new filament very carefully for tangles. This is one of the most common reasons that 3D prints fail. The new reel should rotate in the direction indicated by the sticker on the wall behind the reel. This will minimize the tension on the plastic once it's loaded. Feed the end of the filament through the small square guide at the back of the machine and up through the tube to the print head. On the touchscreen, choose filament again, then load. The printer will heat the extruder back up and let you know when it's time to feed the filament into the small hole at the top of the print head. You should feel the filament catch and begin to pull into the machine on its own. Wait until you see the new color of filament exiting the extruder, then press done. Before we hop onto the computer, double check that the print bed at the bottom of the printer is clear of any old prints. It's totally normal to see some white residue on the print bed, but if you have problems with your print coming unstuck, you may want to use a blunt scraper to gently clean the surface. Finally, we recommend applying a thin layer of glue stick over the surface of the print bed, about the size of your print. Now that the printer is ready, it's time to send it something to make. You can design your own 3D model in CAD software like Tinkercad or choose from huge libraries of free files on websites like Thingiverse. Just be sure to download them as STL files. When choosing a design, keep in mind that the 3D printer will print from the bottom of the model to the top of the model. This means that in general, objects that are bottom heavy and don't have overhanging parts of 45 degrees or greater tend to be significantly easier to print than top heavy objects or those with parts that stick out into space. But we'll talk about some potential workarounds for this in a few minutes. Also keep in mind that the workshop is a public space, so models should be appropriate to be viewed by makers of all ages. 
The production of weapons using the workshop's equipment is also prohibited, and staff may halt, delete, or disallow the use of a model at any time. Once you've chosen a model, it needs to be translated into a set of instructions for the printer to follow. To do this, we'll use a type of software called a slicer. In this video, I'll be using a web-based slicer called RoboCloud. This is the easiest way to print and requires a workshop computer. If you're a more experienced 3D printer user and would like greater control over your print settings, or if you'd prefer to use your own personal computer, you may wanna use the desktop software RoboPrint to slice and print your model via a USB device. RoboPrint is installed on all workshop computers and available for free on the manufacturer's website at robo3d.com. Keep in mind that printing via USB works a bit differently than the cloud printing I'll be demonstrating in this video, so you may need to do some additional reading on the manufacturer's support site before attempting that method. If you're following along with me, navigate to cloud.robo3d.com and sign into the workshop shared 3D printing account. The username and password should autofill as soon as you click into the first entry field. You should see the 3D printer you're planning to use listed as idle with a small green dot beside it. If you don't, the printer may just need some more time. Try refreshing the page in a couple of minutes. If this doesn't work, the printer may need to be reconnected to the library's Wi-Fi network using the settings menu on the 3D printer touchscreen. In the left sidebar, select My Model, then choose Upload Model and find the STL file you'd like to use. Choose Upload one more time, then click on your file in the list below. The software will show you a rough preview of your design, and then you can click Print. Check the drop-down menu in the top left corner to make sure it matches the printer you're planning to use. Now you can preview your print. There are also controls for moving, resizing, and rotating your print in this menu. If your print doesn't fit within the machine's printing area, the model will show that in red. When you're happy with your preview, click into the Print Settings tab to do some final tweaks. Remember when we talked about a workaround for top-heavy prints and overhanging parts? Support is the setting that can help us print objects that would normally collapse. If you select Enable under Support, the computer will generate scrap plastic scaffolding under any problem areas to help your model keep its shape as it prints. But do keep in mind that this scaffolding will consume additional filament, take extra time to print, and must be manually cut or filed away from your final project after you finish printing. Next, you can choose whether or not to print your object on a raft, an auto-generated scrap plastic sheet a bit larger than the base of your model that helps keep your object adhered to the print bed. These are usually much easier to remove than supports and can save a lot of tricky prints. So in general, we strongly recommend enabling a raft. The quality setting determines the thickness of the layers in your print. Thin layers produce a smoother, higher quality print, but they take much longer. The rest of the options in this menu allow you to adjust more advanced settings in your print. If you're just getting started, you can probably leave these at their defaults. When you're happy with your choices, select Print to finish processing your model, then press Start to send your design to the printer. A timer will appear to let you know how long the print will take. If your time estimate is longer than your reservation time, pause the print and check in with a staff member before continuing to make sure the printer will be available for the full length of your project. If you won't be around when your print finishes, we'll hold your project and filament for you for up to a week. Now it's time for the fun part. Just watch the 3D printer do its thing. To prevent damage to the machine, we ask all makers to directly observe the first 20 minutes of their print when models are most prone to failure. After that, you're free to take off. Just make sure that you're back in time to remove your print or confirm with a staff member that it's okay for you to pick up at another time. If you used a workshop computer, you can return it at this time. The 3D printer will continue working even if the computer is powered off. If you do notice any errors in your print, pause it right away, clean up, and try again with some setting tweaks. 3D printing can be finicky at first, so we recommend starting with a small, simple project like one of these calibration cats. When your print finishes, pull up gently on the plastic handles at the front of the print bed. It's magnetized to the base. Gently tug at the print or bend the print bed slightly until the print comes loose, then replace the print bed and power down the machine. Return the power cable and all accessories to the front desk. Congratulations, you're now a train maker. If you want to learn more about everything our 3D printers can do, visit robo3d.com for more information and tutorials direct from the manufacturer, or cfpl.info slash 3dprintlearn to learn more about advanced settings and 3D printing in general from an external site. The workshop is made possible by the generous support of the Concord Free Public Library Corporation, a nonprofit organization supported by makers like you. Learn more about all the corporation does to make our library awesome and how you can help at cfplcorp.org.
And if you can't get enough making, be sure to check out the workshop's full library of maker tools at cfpl.info slash workshop. Bye-bye.